The Canon EOS RP is a pretty divisive camera. On the one hand, it's a brand new full frame mirrorless camera at a price Canon's never approached before. And it makes full frame video accessible to people's wallets in a way that's never been seen. On the other hand, it's missing some key features and really kind of makes you scratch your head and wonder, what? So should you get a Canon EOS RP despite the limitations? Let's find out. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So, Canon. Canon, Canon, Canon. I want to love you so much, and yet, I'm gonna tell you RP, you do not make it very easy. But you know what, I don't want you to think that this video is gonna be me being negative on the EOS RP, because I'm not. There are some really good things going on here that I cannot wait to talk about. I've been playing around with this thing for like a week straight, and there are some things about this that I it just really excites me. First off, a couple disclaimers. One, the awesome people over at BH Photo sent this to me on loan to try out for a few weeks and, and talk about. So this isn't something I've purchased. Keep that in mind. Two, I'm not a photographer, though I am starting to dabble, and maybe in the future we'll talk more about photography. But for now, I'm only going to be covering the features and specs that an online video content creator would care about. Because those are my people. You. You are my people. And oddly enough, those specs and features can be broken down into four major categories, which here on The Everyday Dad, we call the, the columns, columns of quality. Of quality. E First up, video quality. If you are new here, I consider video quality to be a combination of both audio and image recording capabilities because without good audio, you might as well not even upload that video of yourself talking about your personal obsession. Mine just so happens to be cameras, so welcome. The EOS RP has a 26.2 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor. Under the hood is Canon's newest Digic 8 image processor and it can record in up to 4K 24 frames per second. Huge asterisks here for later. When it comes to full HD, it can record in up to 60 frames per second, but it's missing something. Again, we'll talk about that later, probably a deal breaker. And a huge benefit to the RP is that in full HD recording, it has Canon's dual pixel autofocus, which works fantastic as we saw on Monday. Look, there are no two ways about it. I really, really wish that this did at least 4K 30 frames per second with dual pixel autofocus because I am somebody that records everything in 4K 30, but it doesn't, sad face. Also, I'm not a 24 frames per second shooter, but it doesn't have 24 frames per second in 1080p. What? It will do 4K 24 frames per second like we talked about earlier, but that comes with a pretty hefty crop and starts using one of the worst autofocus systems I've ever seen. Again, we saw how this is barely functioning on Monday. I wanted to get those two things out of the way because those are the biggest negatives of the whole camera in my opinion. If you need good autofocus with 4K, look somewhere else. And if you want to do 1080p 24 frames per second, also, you gotta look somewhere else. Like that's, I still, every time I see that, that's just crazy to me. So if you need those two things, unfortunately you have nothing to see here. And I'm, again, just flabbergasted that they would omit 24 frames per second. And I hope, I hope that in a future firmware update, they will unlock this. Because like every other Canon camera shoots 24 frames per second. Now, I'm a 30 frames per second purist, so this doesn't affect me personally too much. So we're gonna continue on with the video, but that sucks. And if you only shoot 1080p, the image quality coming out of the EOS RP is actually pretty darn good. I'm a huge fan of the M50 from Canon, and the RP is basically like a slightly bigger, but way more feature-packed upgrade. I like how the autofocus is able to just work on whatever you want, and I think the colors coming out of the camera are great. Again, I'm not going to talk about color science, that nebulous term, but I do think the colors coming out of the EOS RP are pretty good. Now, if you've used any of the other Canon cameras, you've probably noticed that using it with an external recorder can be a hassle. The RP easily lets you turn off the HDMI display info, even keeping the autofocus on. That's a huge benefit over the M50, so this could actually become a pretty darn useful live stream camera. Now, when you're doing stuff over HDMI, it doesn't give you 10 bit or anything like that over HDMI, so that sucks, but I think being able to turn off that info does make the camera more usable overall. The preamps in the USRP are nothing to write home about, but most cameras have terrible preamps today. The only companies so far that really make me feel comfortable letting the camera do any of the audio recording lifting is Panasonic and in certain cases Sony, but 
certain cases. This isn't a deal breaker by any stretch of the imagination as you can just turn the internal recording all the way down and increase your mic's internal gain all the way up. So bim, bam, boom, your audio will do much better. Like right now we're on the Z6, Z6 has terrible internal preamps. So we're not using them. We're letting the mic do all the work and I think it sounds pretty good. But don't take my word for it. Let's hop outside real quick for a video slash vlogging test. <laughs> Welcome to the vlogging test of the Canon EOS RP. Ready to go? Are you ready? Are we all, are we all ready? Record. I didn't even look, are we recording? Hey, we're recording. Vlogging test begin, whoa. Okay, so this is the vlogging test of the Canon EOS RP. This is our second time in the, uh, the crucible back here doing the vlogging test because this is not part of the initial impressions video. This is part of the impressions in progress video. I need to figure out what we actually call these because they're not necessarily reviews. They're just me having fun with the camera, kind of explain to you what I think online content creators need and uh, kind of share that knowledge, have a lot of fun doing it. And we do the vlog test because it's a quick way to, uh, to try to knock that out without wasting your time. So this is the Canon, so this is the EOS RP with the 24 to 105, Z I almost said Z series, with the 24 to 105 RF lens. I've got a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus on top doing the audio, and we've got the stabilization on the lens turned on. We're just having a, we're having a darn good time. I love, like I totally understand why vloggers choose Canon cameras, because it's just so easy to get set up to get working right and uh, you don't have to worry about it. Like I've got it set to F4, auto ISO. We might be a little overexposed because the sun while gone is now deciding to, to come out a little bit, but I just like how these Canon cameras work. And like we saw a few days ago, the autofocus, uh, we did have a little bit of an autofocus problem on the first day with this camera, but I don't think it's necessarily the camera's fault. Uh, I think it's just like, like right now we should be fine, but if you start to like, move laterally it could lose you but i don't think that's necessarily as big of a problem like when you're doing stuff like this maybe if you're like standing at it and you like start jumping around then it would be a problem but yeah the big problem you're going to run into with canon cameras you may be noticing right now is they don't have any internal stabilization so like nikon so if we talk about full frame cameras right nikon has apparently decided that they want their stabilization built into the camera canon has kind of decided they want their stabilization built into the lenses which i mean it's a way it's not my preferred method, but uh, that seems to be working out okay. I do think the stabilization works pretty well. And this has been the vlogging test. There's the GH5. There's the everyday dad. There's his uh, backyard that you guys keep telling him needs to get cleaned up. <laughs> okay, back to the video. <laughs> okay, and this is the indoor slash studio test of the Canon EOS RP. And we're not using the 24 to 105 kit lens, we're using the 50 millimeter 1.8 EF lens, which is working through the adapter, through the Canon camera. And uh, yeah, I actually, I really like the image quality coming out of this camera. It's 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 impressed me. And the audio you're hearing uh, is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus going through to the RP with the internal recording turned all the way down like we mentioned earlier. But yeah, this is what you would get. This is the exact same settings that we just saw with the Nikon Z6 and the 50 millimeter 1.8. S lens, so these should be roughly the same. The framing's gonna be a little different because I have the Canon much closer to me so that the Z6 can record the Canon recording me uh, so you can see both. That makes sense, right? Uh, but yeah, this is the image quality you can expect. I really like it. I think this could be a fantastic outdoors or indoor studio camera. It just does great work. I would hope so, because if you can't get a full frame camera to look good indoors, then you know, what's the point, right? Because you can get a one inch sensor to look good indoors. So back to the video. <laughs> Video quality is great and all, and for some of you, that's all you'll need. But for the online content creator, you are probably a one-person crew that needs the camera to do more and sit there and take a pretty image while being babied. We need these cameras to finally grow up, get a job, and start pulling their weight. So ease of use is pretty high up there on my list of required attributes. Look, there is nothing on the market like a Canon camera for ease of use. And to be honest, the RP is my favorite laid out Canon camera to date. The EOS R had that multi-function bar on the back and didn't have a mode dial button on top. And that was a big pain in the butt where if you were holding it, I would hit this all the time. The RP brings back the mode dial, but also has two scroll wheels for exposure compensation. Not only that, but these new RF lenses like this 24 to 105 have the control ring on the front that can be set up for the third of the exposure tripod. I have this set up to ISO. Something that I have haven't seen mentioned too often is the size of the RP. It's shockingly small. 
The M50 was a shockingly small APS-C camera, and the RP does the same thing for full frame. It's basically the same size as the X-T3, which is an APS-C camera. Not only the size, but the body actually feels pretty good for the budget price. It's, it's basically exactly like the M50 with a plastic body, but it's got that nice rubber grip. And using the menu system through the fully articulating touchscreen continues to be a strong point for Canon, as no one else, and I mean no one else, not my beloved GH5 or my beloved Z6 comes slightly close to the ease of use of these cameras. Setting them up is a breeze, but even more important is after you hit record and it becomes business time. So how easy is a camera to use after you hit record? Because that's business time. So when it comes to Canon cameras, even including the EOS RP here, uh, they are some of the easiest cameras to use after you hit record. So even though Canon continuously gets beat up online. You know, the EOS R made people angry, the M50 made people angry, the 60 Mark II made people angry. The thing is, those are all incredibly, incredibly easy cameras to use. All you have to do is hit record, it takes care of the autofocus, the auto ISO is not too bad, the auto white balance is not too bad. You don't have to like be a camera expert to get good image quality out of a Canon camera. And that's where they win, and that's where they will continue to be like the top selling camera manufacturer. Look, the GH5 right now is one of my favorite cameras of all time. The Z6 is my favorite full frame mirrorless camera, not the RP. Uh, but those take a little more expertise on how to get going, right? Because the GH5's autofocus is not very good. We're not using autofocus right now, we're using manual focus. But that's not as easy to use as just dual pixel autofocus, make the box around the face work, right? Z6 doesn't have a flip screen. Autofocus is perfectly fine, but it, it's just not the same. So I will say Canon cameras are the easiest to use after you hit record. And that's incredibly, incredibly important. It may not be important to the professional videographers out there, but for those of us that have online content that we've got algorithms that just demand to be fed on a constant basis, you need to not worry about your camera. You need a camera that does most of the work for you. And that's where Canon camera wins all day long. Okay, back to the video. <laughs> and we're back again. So we've seen the video quality and we've seen how shockingly easy it is to get that video quality. But a camera body doesn't do much by itself, so how does the ecosystem slash upgrade path on the EOS RP look? Behind ease of use, this is probably the second strongest part of the RP. You get access to Canon's brand new RF mount and lenses, which these lenses are incredible. And while the M50 has the EFM mount, which is clearly a decent option, but it's also pretty obvious that Canon is putting its R&D into the RF system. So the M50 is great with great lenses, but that's pretty much all you're gonna get. Here, you've got access to some of the most bleeding edge lens technology. And by bleeding edge, I mean bleeding your wallet because they are painfully expensive, but beautiful. These are some of the most exciting lenses today, and they're coming out for the RF mount, so you could save some money on the body while waiting for Canon to get their second generation out there while collecting lenses that will last for a very, very long time. Plus, like the EOS R, you can get a number of adapters to work with all of the older EF glass, and like we saw in the indoor test, it works perfectly well and really makes this an enticing option for newcomers and current Canon users alike. But at the end of the day, so what, right? So should you get a Canon EOS RP? Probably not. Wait, what? Didn't we just spend like the last 1200-ish words saying how awesome it is? And let me check. Um, yep, yep, yeah, we did. So at the end of that everyday dad, why wouldn't you recommend it? So I wanna mention that I think this is actually a pretty good camera. And since I sold my out and about M50, I've been looking for something to replace it, and this is actually pretty high up on my list. I've been really, really impressed with how easy it is to use, and I really like the image quality coming out of this, more so than I liked the M50. That's probably more to do with lenses. But the camera overall has too many limitations for me to recommend this to somebody, especially for the price point of $2,100 if you get the kit lens. For that price, no kidding, you can get a used Nikon Z6 with kit lens, and that's currently the best full frame video camera on the market under 10 grand, and probably 30 grand if you want good autofocus. It's just an awfully steep price to ask somebody to be able to record in 1080p, 30 or 60, especially in 2019. I mean, that's C100 levels of cost for almost none of the benefits except the size. Not only that, but a lot of video shooters use 24 frames per second, 
weirdos. And this camera is literally unusable for them. I still, at the end of the day, I mean, we're at the end of this video and I do not understand why that's missing. In 2019, there are far better video options out there. There are far better video cameras from the Fuji X-T3 to the GH5 to the Z6 to heck the M50, which does a lot of the same things, but for less than half the cost. I mean, there are better options out there, but if you want one of the easiest to use, smallest full frame cameras with very decent 1080p, an all in one package that gets you a seat at the RF lens table, in that situation, then yes, I would absolutely recommend the EOS RP. It's not bad, there are just better options out there. Thanks for watching.